This is Ari Fruchter from Naked Sea. I'm standing here at the edge of the Dead Sea on the stormiest day of the year. Clive Lipton again will be joining me, showing the sinkholes to a group of international students that have come in from around the world to learn more about the environment. The amount of water that flowed into the Dead Sea before it was all extracted by, by humans was 1.3 billion cubic meters per year. That has now been reduced to less than 200 million cubic meters of water per year. The consequence, therefore, is that there simply is not enough fresh water to flow in to counterbalance the water that is evaporating. So since the 1970s, the water level has been dropping by over one meter every year. Right here, you can see a very good example of what's happening. It's now clear that what we're seeing here, the collapse, the literal collapsing of the ground, is a direct consequence of the water levels receding. This means that the entire area is becoming very, very unstable and very unsafe. We really shouldn't be standing here. Nobody jump. If we all jump, we'll fall into the sinkhole. <laughs> How do these things form? Under our feet is groundwater, fresh water, that originates in the Jerusalem mountains. If we're lucky enough today, tomorrow, we probably will see flooding here. And that flood water is water that begins as rainfall in Jerusalem and rushes eastwards towards the Dead Sea. Normally, most of that water infiltrates as groundwater and then flows towards the Dead Sea. Now, what's stopping that groundwater flow is the Dead Sea itself. When the groundwater flows, right, it eventually reaches the seawater. I'm talking under, underground, not above surface, right? Now, because you have two different concentrations, fresh water and highly dense saline water, what do you think is going to happen when the two waters meet? The, the, they're going to, the fresh water flow is going to stop, right, as it meets the seawater because of the difference in solutes. So what we have is what we call a freshwater salt water interface. So the groundwater can only move as far as the seawater. But what is now happening is that the rate of seawater decline is so rapid, right, one meter every year, is that that seawater is receding like this. And as it recedes, it is exposing under the ground blocks of salt, very large blocks of salt under the ground, right? Now what's happening is as the seawater recedes, those salt blocks are being exposed. And then what happens? The groundwater follows the seawater. But now instead of meeting the seawater, it first meets those salt blocks. What's going to happen? The solution, right, the fresh water dissolves, mixes with the salt, and we get underground caverns. Now, this is a process that is dynamic. It keeps happening. You can't stop it. So the more the groundwater flows, the larger those cavities under our feet happen, till eventually they're so large that the above ground soil layer that we're standing on collapses inwards. And the result, sinkholes. Now, how do you stop the seawater sea receding? You've got to stabilize the water levels. How do you stabilize the water levels? Bring water back to the Dead Sea to balance out the water that is evaporating. If we can bring seawater to the Dead Sea and use the altitude difference to generate hydropower, right, then we have a source of energy for very large-scale desalination, the largest that the world will ever see will happen here, maybe, okay? That's the idea, that if we bring red sea water or Mediterranean sea water to the Dead Sea, we actually solve two problems. Water scarcity, desalinate huge amounts of water, mostly for Jordan, some to Israel, some to the Palestinians. The second, use the brine discharge, not just as something to be disposed of, but actually bring it into the Dead Sea. And this is where it becomes political because Jordan, will only be able politically to support a Red Sea Dead Sea project because it's the only route that Jordan can control. Because remember, the purpose of the project is fresh water production and saving the Dead Sea. And Jordan is the most water scarce country. So Jordan politically can only support a project that they have some control over, which is the Red Sea, not the Mediterranean. So why is Israel supporting this project politically? because they want to stabilize and support their neighbor, Jordan. Okay, it's for regional stability. Thirdly, 
What about the Palestinians? Why are they supporting this project? Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated because as we drive north of En Gedi, right, you actually cross the green line and you enter into the West Bank. The West Bank is very close to here. For the Palestinians, for them, a future Palestinian state means access to the Dead Sea. They want access to the Dead Sea for their own tourism, also maybe potash. So for them, coming into this uh, 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 agreement is a way for the Palestinians to say, we also have a claim to the Dead Sea. We want, at some point, territorial control over a section of the Dead Sea. That is also a very interesting, I think, benefit of, of, of what's happening here. Because there is a conflict, there's an environmental catastrophe right here, but there is a lot of opportunities in terms of water and in terms of a political agreement. The only thing at the moment that the governments actually agree on is how to save the Dead Sea. The reality is simple. We must do something because if we don't do anything, this is just going to get worse.